don't you hate when this happens? Today on Repairs 101, I got a sink that won't drain. And if you're watching this, I imagine you've got one too. So I'll take you through your options and show you what you can do about it. I'm allowing the washing machine to vent into the sink, which allows for a buildup of what is otherwise just dryer lint that never made it to the dryer. I'll get you a shot of some of that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. Huh? Okay, as always, first line of defense is going to be a plunger. We're just getting in there and see if we can't get a real good seal on it. And I say the plunger is the first line of defense because it's the most eco-friendly choice you have. And that is just to use hydraulic pressure to drive through your blockage. You know, this is the second time I'm trying this and it's really not working out for me. So I'm going to have to move on to something stronger. Alright, so this is my snake. There's all kinds of different snakes actually. This is just an inexpensive manual snake that you'll find at virtually any good hardware store. Uh, this one's probably 15 feet long, I'm not really certain. I've had it for many, many years. And the reason I'm wearing gloves, of course, is to keep me from coming into contact with the horrible places that this little fella has been. So I'm just going to unwind it and drop it on the floor. Show you that that's what we're looking at. It's nothing but a spring that's been unwound a bit at the end. So I'm going to just let it seep. I know it's probably going to be clear in a few hours, clear enough that I don't have to bucket it all outside or pitch it out the window. So I'm just going to wait it out. You know, that's often the best thing you can do, especially with uh, home plumbing like a toilet. Uh, sometimes, if, if you can, apply the 24-hour rule, which is just come back 24 hours later, because very often organic matter will break down in the water in that period of time and clear itself. Uh, but this isn't going to, but it will seep fast enough through the material. You can see, that's just a rag that I was using yesterday. I got a lid from one of these Rubbermaid storage bins. And uh, I'm going to use that to catch the water. And look at that. Very often you can just undo these by hand. You don't even need a pipe wrench. Okay, now there are a lot of options available to you as far as what you can use to open up that elbow joint. This pair of channel locks here might be kind of overkill. Um, they're quite quite something. Just an ordinary pair that you might find in virtually anybody's kitchen drawer, on the other hand. It's really all you need. You can use a pipe wrench, but pipe wrenches are heavy and cumbersome and might be inclined to damage the plastic pipes. There are new style of uh, pipe wrench available. That would certainly be very effective and uh, very useful, but that's kind of an expensive wrench for the average person. So I might still recommend you just go with the uh, with the medium-sized channel locks here. Um, if, if all you've got is, say, a chain wrench or a locking chain wrench, you know, this kind of stuff will obviously do the job, but you're going to have to be very careful, as, as with the pipe wrench, you know, you're going to have to be very, very careful. You're dealing with plastic fittings and they don't take a lot. Now, a specialty wrench here, the manufacturer was kind enough to let us know what it is. It's called a slip and lock nut wrench. And I've uh, had a lot of use for this in the boat building industry. I use it on plastic through hull fittings. It's just a wide jawed adjustable wrench and you're just going to slip it like that. Now this is a very, very light duty little tool, but if you're uh, collecting unusual tools, and because they're nice and light, um, you're not as likely to slip and say damage a, a new fiberglass boat when you're putting in through hull fittings. Okay, so this time I'm going to be wearing my respirator with, with the organic cartridges on it. Although this isn't a toilet outlet, it is connected to all the other toilet outlets in the neighborhood. And the smell coming out of it is just ferocious. You're going to want to uh, ventilate the room well and, like I'm doing, wear a respirator. Already loosened off the top nut with these channel locks here. Got my catch basin underneath. I'm just undoing it. And out it comes. I'll just pour the water into this catch basin here. And, to my surprise, the elbow is completely clear. The problem is further downstream. Lucky for me, I got a snake. Before you do anything else, you need to shove a rag or something up to plug that hole. Because you get the sewage 
gas smell coming up because now there's no water trap to stop it. So you got to get something in there fast. Ugh, the smell is just horrific. All right, I got my mask on, I got my gloves on, and I'm ready to tackle this thing. First thing I'm going to do, just back off that nut so it's loose. Got my catch base in here. Here, I'm going in with the smell. Okay, I'm going to use the crank. It's a very crude little crank, but it works nonetheless. It allows you to spin. You just tighten that thumb screw right there. And the S-turn in the, in the metal allows you to crank a little bit. And then you can back it off and feed some more in. There we go. Going a lot further now. It's isn't good. Check it out, that is the absolute end of my snake. It is all the way in. All but this one foot that you see in my hand. So I gotta put my catch basin right here again and slowly pull it out and clean it off as it's coming out. This rubber made lid, storage bin lid I was talking about earlier. Very handy. Okay, I got my mask back on, my gloves back on. I got a couple of wet rags. My plastic bag ready to receive the snake. And we'll expect the worst and hope for the best. Pull the plug. And just start pulling this thing out. And feeding it into the bag. And cleaning it off as necessary. Okay, you can see this black organic matter coming up already. That's what I'm going to try and avoid coming in contact with. And I'll try and catch it all with the rag. But I'm already seeing some smear inside the plastic bag, so I'm glad I'm using a plastic bag. Because clearly, the rag isn't getting it all. Okay, that's pretty horrible. Let's put it with the rag and everything in the bag. Get this plug back in for the moment. And get myself organized to put that water trap back in. Okay, here we go. There we go. Nice seat on that seal there. And then let this thing pull it down into it. And hopefully that's going to hold water. Hand tight is gently tight enough. And hand tight on top as well. This is the critical area here that's going to leak if we have a leak. I'm going to leave my catch basin underneath and uh, get some water in it. Okay, well, I don't know that it's running properly, but I do know at least the trap is full of water. And so the smell can't come up from the sewer. I can take this damn thing off. And here, I'm going to knock my glasses off. How you doing? It's not over yet, though. I haven't even tested it, but I'll tell you this straight up. If it doesn't work, I'm going to pour some Drano down there. And, uh, you know, that's my last line of defense. You might want to go and try a product like this Drano Max Gel. I've had a lot of success with this in other areas of the house. So it says on the back it contains sodium hydrochloride and you know it's a great product I just wanted to suggest that when you're trying to decide whether or not to use a product like that consider the fact that the water you're pouring it into is indirectly the same water you're drinking. Okay sounds like it's gonna require some more plunging. Yeah, it's not free running yet. Eventually I did break down and clean the sink, kind of.